Hey, I'm David Rosengarten. Welcome to Cheese 101. So, are you a cheese lover? No. <laughs> you don't like cheese? No. How come? And how come you don't like cheese? Because there's so many different flavors and textures. Today, I want to start with uh, the most uh, simple and basic and fundamental question. What the fuck is cheese? Because people don't really know this. People have, are just confused. Oh yeah, there's that cheese. It's that thing called cheese. Well, it, it's really very simple and it's an ancient natural process. And once you know, then a lot of things clear up in the whole world of cheese. Understood. So let me show you this first. Here I have some grapes as they'd be hanging on a vine. You pick the grapes and then what do you do? You squeeze them. And what comes out of those grapes when you squeeze them? Juice. Juice comes out of those grapes. Grape juice. And you know, you, you, you press a whole bunch of them and you end up with like a big vat that has a lot of juice in it. But look at this. You see what's on? That's not dirt. That's not New York City dust. That's yeast. Yeast naturally occurs on the outside of the grapes. So if I want to make wine, watch this. I'm a winemaker. Here I have a nice grape. That's a grape. Nick! Break that open. The juice mixes with the yeast. That's wine. You've turned it into wine. Now, let's turn to cheese. Instead of hanging grapes, let's think about a hanging udder off of the animal. Cow, sheep, goat. Let's talk about cows today. Let's talk about a cow's udder. Think of the grapes as a cow's udder. You squeeze the grapes, you squeeze the udder, what do you get? Yeah, I get cow juice, also known as milk. I've got a whole bunch of cow juice in this pan right here, including some warm stuff. It's all been warmed, just gently warmed, because that's what helps the magic take place, and I'm about to show you the magic. And then, to this cow juice that's gently warm, you take this substance, which is called rennet. Now, rennet naturally occurs in the animal's stomach. So, it's all very, very natural. You add just a little bit of rennet to this much milk. That should be about enough right there. Stir it up a little bit. You wait a little while, an hour, two hours, and something miraculous takes place. You get big chunks of things called curds, and that essentially is cheese. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let this guy sit here and curdle for an hour or two, and meanwhile, I'm gonna go milk a few more cows. That's my Bessie. Okay, so we're back here a couple of hours later with the, um, the, the milk curdled by the rennet. And what we have in here is we have a combination of some curds. You can see you got lumpy ones and big ones. And the rest of the stuff is now called whey. Uh, of course, the curds themselves are much, um, you know, fattier, and the whey is much more um, kind of watery and thin. Um, now, at this point, You've got your raw material. I mean, the curd basically is cheese, but at this point, human beings have developed a million different ways to um, deal with these curds and turn them into that vast, wonderful category that we call cheese. Um, you have decisions right up front about cutting. Do you want the curds to be big? Do you want them to be tiny? Do you want them to be medium-sized? Because the size of the curds is gonna make a huge difference in the way that the cheese ultimately turns out. But let's start with a very basic one. What size cheese am I going to make? A cheese is made by taking a mold and putting the uh, curds, most usually cut, in the mold. So let's, let's take a little look at that process right now. This is my cheesecloth here, as you know, and um, you have to have some way of getting these curds easily out of the way, out of their way, not my way. And basically, you can pick it up like this and you can start squeezing. You can squeeze a lot, you can leave some of the liquid in. You know, it's totally up to you as cheesemaker. Now, 
I'm going to grab some of the curds that I have in here and I'm going to start to put them in this mold. But basically you build this mold and of course some uh, liquid is going to come out of here that's why it has the holes in it. You build um, the mold with the curds and then and of course there's there's salting that's another key question do you salt it? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, sometimes heavily, sometimes lightly and then basically now we get into all the issues of time. Basically you want to put this away Keep it in storage. If you store it for a day or two, like I can think of some fresh goat cheeses that you might want to store like a very short amount of time, a couple of days, then you have a very fresh cheese. But you, if you have a big format, you can store cheese for like four years. It just changes with time. It keeps getting more intense and it comes together and you will not ultimately, of course, see all these breaks in the curd. It will all grow together. I have, I happen to have here one that I made yesterday and it's already starting to change. You can see that it's a much more homogeneous kind of lump in this cheese mold. Um, these were stacked on top of each other and notice the, uh, the pattern on the bottom of this mold which this cheese has now picked up on the top. So um, now that you've got your cheese it's up to you. Put it in uh, a moist room, a dry room, a cold room, a warmer room. Hold it for three days, hold it for three weeks, hold it for three months, hold it for three years. This is all the art of the cheese maker. And by the way, um, while you're doing that, there are various processes that you can do to the cheese while it's aging that turn it into different kinds of cheese. We have cheese, Bessie! It's nice, huh? Very good. <laughs> well, he likes it. Mikey likes it. Yeah, okay. Say cheese. Say cheese. Yeah.